So now we are in the ZBrush. We just uh, imported under tool uh, the created uh, OBJ or after we used uh, Go ZBrush from the 3ds Max it, uh, it automatically jumped into this kind of state. So we have to go to document and turn off Pro and type in 1024 and 1024 and resize it. Then we just select the tool, click and drag in the canvas, press T on the keyboard to go to edit mode and uh, then we're going to go down to deformation and click on unify. So it's uh, it turns out something like this. So just press F to frame it to the, the to the created uh, document size, and if you see these lines on the top of the bottom, like this, uh, here, just uh, you zoom and zoom it out, and then again press F to make sure you have everything in place. So the next thing we're going to do is going down to polygroups because everything now is one polygroup. If we turn on by holding, uh, pressing Shift F, we see one polyframe, a polygroup. And after we apply Auto Group, it's all divided into different polygroups, which is exactly what we want. Then under Geometry, we're going to turn off Smooth and subdivide it a couple of times, like seven times. Uh, it should have more than one million polygons uh, uh, poly what is this poly poly count so now because we have all these um, in poly groups we can turn this off and holding control shift and clicking on one of them it just isolates it and hides everything else and if we click uh, press F on the keyboard it just uh, makes it more easy to work with. Then I use uh, B, T, D to uh, go to Trim Dynamic Brush and I just brush the edges off. And this is the process that I'm going to use for all uh, the elements that we created and after I do that if I go uh, too far like like something like this and I don't want this to be so indented I just press a comma on the keyboard to go to here and you're going to start here and under brush double click on planar and select planar flatten and then just click and drag and drag backwards and it's going to uh, redo the shape that you're looking for. So next brush I'm going to use it's, it's going to be again on the brush uh, planer and planer cut and I'm going to use drag rectangular and I'm going to use alpha 007 or alpha 28 it depends on how sharp I want this uh, to be. So I'm going to use alpha 07 for now and under brush, if you go to the top here, brush, open it up and under depth I'm going to set this to 2 because after I apply this uh, brush you can see it uh, reacts uh, on the value of this depth. If I increase it it's going to be more harsh. So it's a per personal preference which uh, which number you're going to set. So then just hold Ctrl Shift and click on the canvas to make everything visible again, pressing F on the keyboard to go out and then just do this for every uh, element. You don't have to do this twice for the elements like for the corners because we're going to copy and move them. So just do every single one of them uh, except these that are doubled. And I'm going to see you in a second. So we are back and now I have everything sculptured that I have to have. And now as I have this uh, selected I'm going to delete 
lower uh, subdivisions in uh, geometry and under subtool I'm going to go to split and group split and press OK now it's going to split everything apart so everything is uh, a single subtool holding alt and clicking on uh, subtool it's going to select it and uh, pressing W on the keyboard to go to the move view uh, move tool and I'm going to uh, first duplicate this uh, subtool by holding Control shift d and now I'm going to uh, click the center and holding shift and dragging it to the side and making sure it's really aligned as it should be as perfectly as possible so we don't have uh, too much uh, to fix in Photoshop afterwards. So I'm going to Control Shift D again to make another duplicate and holding Shift and click and drag in it. And again realign it holding Shift. And again Control Shift D to duplicate it again and just oops just move it to the side again as closely as possible so let's say this is uh, pretty much it and now I'm going to go Q to go to draw move uh, draw tool again and alt click on this one control shift D to duplicate it W on the keyboard and move it down and align it as it should be and again whoops pretty hard to do this in this small window Q alt click to select it control shift D to duplicate it W on the keyboard and move it downwards so this is pretty much the same thing for uh, all these uh, objects that are uh, that are going over the edge of the base plane that we created in 3ds Max one and uh, this one control shift D W and click and shift and drag and realign it okay let's see if we can select this one and delete it yep this one and delete it. Yep. This one and delete it. Yep. This one and delete it. Yep. I hope I did all of them. It sure looks like I did. Yeah. Okay, what's next? next will be so now we are going to apply some color to this uh, model so I docked uh, color and brush to the side and just select uh, and I merged everything down but the plane in the merge and merge down and okay 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 
and then I just select this sub tool and select the color using basic material and then just under color fill object so we can see we have a polypoint on it and now we can uh, just play around with uh, some additional color adjustments you can maybe turn it, it down I'm using a uh, standard um, brush freehand and um, brush alpha which is I don't know 07 and RGB intensity to 100% and only RGB turned on and as you can see we can get some interesting color variation sometimes it gets really crazy but you can fix everything by just doing something else so I just love to play around with uh, width masking under masking and I just normally use just plain mask by cavity and I don't uh, change ev anything and so we can see that we have some areas uh, unmask and some mask and if we don't want to view the mask we just turn on view mask and then just fill object and we can see we created some nice transformation for the colors and if we want to inverse the selected color and just maybe just paint these cavities with something more darker and here we go we have this uh, created now if I would free, free poly paint this um, I would have to uh, again split all the subtools and then just again uh, uh, control shift D duplicate the subtool and move it to the side because these subtools that are looking over the edges have to be uh, the same as in uh, scope as in color so bear that in mind it's probably better to uh, color everything before you uh, move copy and move this over uh, over the edge subtools. So this is about poly painting. Just play around with this cavity and maybe peaks and valleys. It's also nice. It gets a little bit different result, but you can always just fill object and it will get some nice uh, nice variation to your uh, poly paint.